Hello and welcome to a brand new series from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Daniel Cody and each week I'll be interviewing co-hosts Craig Savage and Charlie Betts about their roles in non-league football. Craig and Charlie work together as manager and coach respectively for a non-league local football team, currently playing in step 7 of the non-league pyramid. In each episode I'll quiz them on their approach to a different aspect of their work to give an insight and diary into managing and coaching in English non-league football. So today in the first and probably most generic episode of the series I want to talk very basically about why you're involved in coaching and management, why you're involved in non-league football and just why you enjoy it really. So for this uh, particular episode I've taken a series of questions that have been used at professional football clubs when interviewing managers or coach or mock examples of ones that could be used. So I'm going to quiz you on 11 of my favourites. Yeah. And if you can give me a, a minute or so answer on each, doesn't have to be as long as that, doesn't have to be too specific. I just want to know where your passions are. Okay. In future weeks, we'll get onto the more detailed technical parts, such as certain aspects like training and tactics yeah, yeah. and things like that. But for this one, I just want to talk about why you are coaches and managers. So the first question is, why do you want to coach and manage? So whoever wants to go first. Well, you're, you're the gaffer, Craig, so you probably should go first. You're the main man, so. Well, I uh, I became a manager because I, my playing days are pretty much gone. And, um, due to injury. For due, to injury due to injury. Um, but they're not over yet. Um, <laughs> but I, I've been with the club playing for 10, 15, uh, 11, 12 years. And uh, the club gave me an opportunity to uh, be a manager. Yeah. Uh, help, or help out with one of the reserve sides. And I took it. Uh, it keeps me occupied. It's uh, very hard to watch a game when you uh, when your own team makes sense. So what better can you do? It's obviously be on the in the dugout. Yeah, uh, and that is probably one of the reasons why I took over as a joint manager. So is it more? It was a more because of your playing days finishing as the natural next step, rather than a specific desire to become a manager naturally. It was, it was next. It was literally naturally a next step, and um, it, it it kept me involved, kept my mind going, and if it wasn't for Corey, I would. What I would do, I'd probably be sitting at home, watching either watching football, watching Sky Sports, or mm. just bored out my ass. And Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the eloquence of that one. Yeah. <laughs> do you want me to, it's not so <laughs> and obviously, not long after joining, you enlisted Charlie as a coach. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, he has a bit more coaching experience from previous clubs and years, and has, has been a bit more of a journeyman, let's say. <laughs> no, I, I knew. Um, obviously, I know. Me and Charlie played together when we were kids since the age of eleven, and obviously, we've grown up to be like really good friends and best friends. Yeah. And I thought me and uh, Richard, my joint manager at Cordy Reserves, um, we both had the same idea literally on the same day. Um, he said, what do you think to ch- bring in Charlie Betts? But I said, fine enough, Richard, I've already had that conversation with Charlie. Yeah. And uh, it's proven at the moment to be a, a good idea. Absolutely. Having watched a few of your games, I would say the same thing. Kind of, yeah. And then over to you, Charlie, I guess, obviously, as we say, you've got a bit more of a background in coaching. Yeah. I know you've done a couple of coaching badges and things like that. What drove you into it and I, I know think, obviously probably the natural of being a school teacher but well yeah I think mine comes from two places to be honest Dan I think that the, the, you, you you laugh about me being a journeyman but I'll be honest and this the, part of my um, ambition is that the right word I don't know pathway into coaching was that although I played at lots of different clubs I played on some shit coaches <laughs> and I hated the way that I, I felt like a training session for me had to be worthwhile coming for and you know I mean that in the politest way possible but if I'm travelling across certain parts of the county for a fucking six aside, I could do that with my mates down the park. Do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So I became very frustrated with that, and then it was something that I'd sort of moved into youth football because I'm a school teacher anyway. It was a natural sort of thing that I'd be doing a lot of that. But youth football's great, and the development and the progression you see in kids is a lot m- easier to um, track, and also it's a lot rapid, a lot more rapid. Sorry, yeah. than adults. You know, adults are very set in their ways. I think that's a big difference. But I think it was then, you know, similar to Craig, suffered an injury. I'd already been doing a little bit of adult coaching, but not a lot. But I think it was more to to give pe- people the opportunity to understand that actually training is a purpose. And I think that comes from my teaching background that, you know, you go into a lesson and you have a objective to teach that lesson. And, you know, I hated having these training sessions where it was just a hodgepodge of stuff that just got thrown together because Five aside. you'd seen it on YouTube or something yeah. like that. And actually, what are you trying to work on in that session? Is it, you know, defensive shape? Is it that you want to, that why play? You know, whatever it is. And I, I became very frustrated. And I think I can only probably say one or two coaches, and I know I played for what, 15 clubs, I think we counted one day, Probably only one or two coaches um, who I could say, you know what, actually, I really enjoyed their coaching sessions. And that has a positive impact on the football pitch. So I think that was one part of it. And also, the I'm not a great leader when it comes to being a manager. I, I, you know, I did a very short stint managing the district team. So I coached the district team with my dad and another bloke for years and years. 
But managing is a whole different ball game, and there's a whole different skill set for that. And that's something that I don't possess because I haven't got the heart to drop people. I haven't got the <laughs> the thing to say to you're not playing today. It. Yeah, essentially. <clears throat> and actually, it sounds silly, but you can see your impact on a football team a bit. I find it a bit easier as a coach than what you can as a manager. And that's no disrespect to to sort of what you're doing, Craig. Because I mean, you know, being a manager is so much harder than being a coach. But if you do a practice a corner routine in training and then they score from it, that's a nice buzz that you... For me, it was the only way I could still get that contribution that I couldn't get from playing. So once you stop playing, you can't really contribute to the team unless you get involved in it. And so for me, I didn't want to be a manager, so the next thing was to be a coach and coming from that sort of teaching background, really. Fair enough. And I guess it leads quite nicely onto my next question, and you've sort of touched on it, but you can both touch on it in a bit more detail, particularly based on this year, is going into it, what did you expect your main values to be in terms of management and coaching? And... Have they changed or have they become exactly what you expected them to be? Um, I think for me to start with, cause we, we, had a, we knew there was going to be a few under 18 players that have now gone past the threshold. And you talked about that from the start, to be fair. Yeah, and we needed to build that relationship again because um, the under 18 to play midweek football uh, to a good, uh, a good standard. And uh, I've watched a few games last season and I, thought, I was quite impressed with some of the players and I thought, I'll need you in. Um, the way the reserve season finished last season was a bit naughty uh, but we had to get these players in to uh, build them up really yeah. and it, and it, it uh, for all our philosophy is just building them up working hard and you got to look after them in a way because it's hard to get that from eight, under 18 football to obviously playing a similar age group to adult football when you're playing something like in their mid 20s and 30s and it's, it's totally uh, to the physical side it's totally different um, so you, you have to look after them that way and and at the moment, we've got for us, we've got about six, seven players are sixteen to eighteen in a reserve side, which is relatively rare. It's relatively rare, and it's it's good in a way, but obviously you still need to you still need them to learn. They're going to make mistakes, and that's where you get the older players. We still got eight, nine older players anyway. We've got a big squad, mm. and obviously now they're starting to, like five, six games in, they're starting to click and it's starting to gel. It's, it's hard in pre-season because it was all split. Oh, the older lads were here and the younger lads are there. And uh, our job, one of our jobs, is to get them in jail together. Mm. And at the moment, it's working. I'm similar for you, Charles. What was the question again? Sorry, I'll cut that bit out. Uh, in terms of... <laughs> no, sorry. No, no, no. You were I forgot. Really answer. I forgot. I the forgot. <laughs> in terms of your main values for the... Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, so I, I think that, actually, man. leaving what you quote, we're in a, a difficult position being a reserve team. You know, because there is there is a sort of step between you from the first team, and there yes. is a challenge to that because there is an expectation that you know if there's players in the first team aren't getting a game, they come down to us. And as but much as we, you're trying to develop up, aren't you? Uh, yeah. So development, I mean, you hear lots of buzzwords in football. Let's be brutally honest. You know, development, player development, this and etc. I think you have to be realistic if you're talking about amateur football, which is what we're involved in. Player development is very limited because you have the contact time of them is an hour. Which really, by the time you've got them there in this time of year in the winter, AstroTurf, you'd be lucky. Forty-five to get. minutes. Yeah. So in terms of development, you're thinking more right. What can we achieve as a team? The, the development of individuals is okay. We get a little bit of time to do it at the end of the session, maybe five or ten minutes to do a bit of extra stuff with them. But that's just before the lights go out. So actually, the value for me is is seeing players have that pathway of going from 18s to reserves to first team. But being able to cope with that, what I mean is is to give them enough skills to cope with. Right in the first team, they might be a bit more direct than what we are. But you can cope with that, and and I think that that's it's giving uh, trusting the young lads that yes you can step up to that level and cope with playing in reserve team football, and the reserve team lads being able to cope with the, the first team. And I think that it's trying to instill that in them in forty five minutes is quite a challenge. But I think if you can get my value, I suppose what are my values for that is that I want them to be able to go into different football environments and be adapt be able to adapt their game. That's why that's what I was trying to get across. Yeah. So I would edit that out. To adapt their games so that they can play in different parts of, of the footballing sphere, I suppose. Which is a, is a really important point, and it's something actually we'll touch on in a future one in terms of training, particularly in the way you, you develop players mm. or help them to, to learn and adapt. Because in non league football, players move clubs quite a yeah, lot, yeah, which is yeah, yeah. something that's a bit different. But I guess moving on to the, to the training very briefly for this episode is in terms of Charlie from being, I guess, the main coach of the team, mm-hmm. and from you, I guess, probably in pre-season from watching a lot of his training sessions, yeah. is how do you know, Charlie, when you've delivered a high-quality coaching session or one that you think that oh, was I can brilliant? Tell. And, and, <laughs> yeah. I know he probably gloats about it. And for you, Craig, no. how do you know when you've seen one from him? I guess would be my question. Yeah, do you know what? If I'm honest, if I'm honest, actually, sometimes the shittiest sessions that I feel in terms of my delivery 
are probably the ones that the lads have got the most out of. And the reason I say that is it's, it's that it's that problem solving element to it. So actually, yeah, I can go there and say, right, do this, 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 and they'll learn how to learn by rote to do, when the ball goes there, we do that, when the ball goes there, we do that. But if that situation doesn't come up in the game, it's being able to cope with that. And actually sometimes having a crap session where, you know, the pe- space isn't as big as what we thought we'd have one session yeah. where basically we had a third of a third. So then you have to cope with that. So actually, I think in terms of knowing a good session, it's if you then give them a cue in the game, before the game, and I say to them, like, right, if there's no pressure on the ball, what are you going to do? And if they can answer that, then I know that it's pro- Whether they've messed up and knocked the ball out of play 15 times in the session on the Wednesday or on a Tuesday, I don't necessarily see that as a good session. I think it's having the patience to review it a week, two, three weeks down the line. That's when I feel like that session... So I'll, I'll give you an example. We did some set pieces pre-season. For the first four games of the season, they, they were atrocious, absolutely atrocious. And we reviewed it once as the, the sort of um, uh, season's gone by. But actually, we had a game on Saturday. The the, mo- the, the, the timing of the runs in that was a million times better. And we should have really scored from them, to be honest. We scored one in the end. Yeah. So the point being, I think what I'm trying to get at is, is you have to be patient. And therefore, I feel like that actually you won't see the, fru- the fruits of your labour three, four, five games later. And they always say that at the start of the season, don't they? Give us 10 games. Yeah, which yeah. is something that doesn't often happen in football, I guess, yeah. at higher levels now, which thankfully still does at this mm-hmm. level. But Craig, for you watching Charlie, yeah, when, yeah. When, do you, when do you know he's delivered a good season? Are there any telltale signs, I guess, on the flip side of that when you think, oh, this is going to be a bit of a stinker? Yeah. If you've had any of those. Um, no, not really. Oh, because offended, no, no. <laughs> no, no, honestly. <laughs> it's all about honesty. It could be no, like, exactly for you, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cancelling. It's coaching cap. No, because... Um, to be honest, I actually take part in most of it. Which I guess at non-league is something that's often mm. forgotten. Because you often, when you see on Sky Sports News, for example, Football League and Premier League Club, Champions League, whatever, you just see the manager sort of strolling around yeah. with arms folded, keeping an eye on things. I think, but you've, you've highlighted something brilliant there. Which I, think is that often I, think what, I think what's clicked, I think what uh, Richard would watch from the side, I would take part in it, because one, to build my own fitness up. And you've mentioned you desperately want to be a player. <laughs> 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 no, no. Uh, but obviously there's always like the old man, the next to like the old man, yeah. So I'll, I'll take part in it, and I do. I generally see it, and I generally obviously enjoy the training. I'm, I'm messaging probably um, after the weekend, so I'm enjoying training. It's the first time I actually enjoy training for a yeah. very long time, um, which is important. Enjoyment's yeah. very important. And um, I, it, I can tell, like we worked on our, our first. One, I think one of our first training sessions was if the team goes long ball, what do we do? We're going to drop, sit back, and we're going to drop back as, as soon as they hit it, and um, a few times on Saturday. That's what exactly happened. They dropped back, and then he gets into Charlie gets excited. No, what like, are you <laughs> like, like they were playing with the Brown when they uh, survived. But no, but it shows that we all get happy about that. Yeah. yeah, we can see it, and then I don't think that, uh, I don't think at times the players notice it. They just do no. it, and that's the thing. If you don't mean interrupting really quick, it's the autonomy of it. If if I were to sit there and shout with someone what to do in every situation, I'd go and play FIFA with all due respect. You know, in that sense, if I were to just control every yeah. aspect of a game. So I think it's that autonomy of, like you say, the bits we probably get most excited about. I don't know. I, I, I'm just telling the interview equally. I think slightly what my expectations from a game are slightly different to Craig. Craig, as a manager, you know, heads on a chopping block, points, points, results. That's it. There's times when we've won I mean, a game. I Craig's very much like that anyway. Yeah. From our video game exploits. <laughs> but there's times when we've won a game and I've been too happy because we're like, we actually played quite shit or we didn't stick to that philosophy or we didn't do that in that situation. Yeah. So I think the expectations are different, but it's that autonomy of we did pre-season. What are the triggers or the cues? for when to drop and when to press. And when they're doing that by themselves without me or Craig having to say, you know, is there pressure on the ball, which is almost like code for us first, to say, right. First game of the season, um, we played biggest, uh, team called Biggest Way United on 23s, and it, the, the game was on YouTube, highlights on YouTube. And if you can go back to that video, you can hear us saying, is there any pressure, is there any pressure? And that's just a cue that we gave them pre-season to be right. Is there pressure on the ball? And that, asking them that question, you know, right, if there is, we need to step up. If there's not, then we need to drop off. But you end up saying that quite a lot. Now it's a lot more autonomous. Just to really quickly give you, sorry, I keep waffling on, but the um, when I, I was coaching Luton schools, we took them out to America uh, on a tour, and I one of the best teams we played was a, this American team, and I watched the coach and he his his vocal input because they were so well drilled, and you know their contact times a lot more than what we had. But yeah. the point being, he very seldom did he say anything, and yet his team were they knew the fullback knew. I can guarantee now their fullback knew where the centre midfielder, centre half, and the right midfielder was before he'd even received the ball. Because it was so well driven, and as a coach, then what really you don't need to say anything in that situation. Well, so guess, is that autonomous? I guess the part? other side from watching you guys is last season, obviously when you two weren't actively involved as much, or Craig, uh, Charlie at all. Yeah, is that there was an awful lot of sc- ranting and raving yeah. from the dugout. Whereas I came to watch you guys two or three weeks ago prior to this interview, where mm. you were 
for large parts of the game, very, very good and very tactically strong. And you barely had to say a word. Yeah, the I'm, team like, were just playing in your philosophy. Mm, a prime, prime example, we had this uh, a centre midfielder and young lad, and we put him in. He goes, "I'm a better centre midfielder," so we, we put him in centre midfield. And then he was doing, he was making, he, got, he was making mistakes where he shouldn't be doing. And an experienced player wouldn't do that. And then they played the game after that. And he had, he didn't play well. He had a stinker, and obviously Charlie had a word with him. Uh, I went over the top. Of it. I went over the top, and that's why I can't be a manager because I, 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 you know, I very seldom do I really go at a player, but I sort of lost my head with him, and I'm not proud of that. And it was something that I regret a little bit. But and that's however, why I couldn't be a manager. Pop up yeah. later, however, that's why I couldn't be a manager. Yeah. If I'm honest, I however, couldn't handle that situation very well. Do you know? However, though, it sparked it sparked in his mind because uh, in the player's mind, and he's been brilliant ever since that mm. game. So then he's again, you reflect so on that negatively, but it could have well have been a positive. That negative, yeah. yeah, a negative. It might be a negative for him. Yeah, but it's turned to a positive. I think it's player. trying to give not uh, without criticizing a lot of other coaches or managers at the level we're involved in. A lot of them spot problems, and players don't want problems. Players want solutions. So if you're telling him stop clipping it over the fullback, you've got to tell him what would what you like to see him do instead. Do, yeah. yeah, okay. Well, maybe keep the ball there or recycle it. You know yeah. that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. and and that player has, has been absolutely superb since that since that oh, um, yeah, second yeah, game. You on Twitch? I think there's a bit more to it. Um, so I want to go to the other side of training now yeah um, which is obviously particularly when you're trying to work on autonomy when you've mm. only got 45 minutes and people are there to enjoy themselves yeah. Yeah. you're occasionally going to get a player who wants to bad man a few sessions yeah and you've probably had it in the past yeah um, how do you handle it if a player reacts negatively to your coaching session or I guess in Craig's instance if they react negatively a decision why on earth are you dropping me things like that yeah. as Charlie mentioned which he's not a big you fan you go first I think you, you get a lot more of it than what uh, I'm more of the bridge between the two, so I think you probably get a lot more flack for dropping people or playing people out of position, etc. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. how do you handle it? It's, it's, do you know what? It's for um, first season as a manager. It's actually it's very hard, it, and they say it's something obviously you've known for years and you you, you played with them, and, and obviously you got and you don't re- and it's some of obviously the younger players, and it's you try and explain it to them. Um, I'll, I'll I'll try and deal with it. I've had one incident with a goalkeeper which it turned a bit sour and. That's half it was my fault and half it was another mm. team's fault. That's not my fault, but um, I didn't. Like, I didn't do it. But I learned from that dealing with it. But now we're obviously we're back fine. Sort of yeah. problem. It's 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 very hard to deal with it. It's very hard. Um, how I will have them. I will speak to them. Um, if they don't agree with it, fine. But but as long as you've taken that time to inform them to discuss with them the reason. Yes, mm. uh, I th- I think you've got to do that. I think. Because what we do is, because um, obviously our, our shorts are put numbers on it, so I need to do a team, um, right, name the team so prior yeah. to we will go out and warm up. Um, so I'll name a team and then they'll get changed and then I'll, once they come out, I'll have a quick word of them. Or I will say, he Craig's very good at not publicly shaming people. R- whether it be positive or negative, he's very good at, you know, there's times he's spoken to players, you know, he's done it. And that's during my warm up or something like that, you know. I think he's very good at his man management in that sense. One to one conversations are meant to be in private, but something that's very often and forgotten. Na- nowadays, so. especially, I think gone are the days when you ball out people in front of the squad. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think I, I try to look at <coughs> players think, are a lot more sensitive now. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Uh, I think I, I look at what Jurgen Klopp's doing, and I look mm. at Fer- how Sir Alex Ferguson do. I try and look at their way of man management, um, and, and and I think that's what like I like Klopp's way. I really do like. Like arm around the shoulder, mm. and I think so. Robbie Robson was another person that, yeah, man management wise. And um, I want obviously, I want to get the best out of my players. And like, I remember a player like two weeks ago, he came on as a sub and he didn't have the right boot wear on, he was mud, he was slippery, and he was so upset after the game because he had a couple of chances and he didn't take them. And he was on not a good goal scoring run, and he was upset. and I, I said, look, don't worry, you're worth, everything you're doing um, before shooting is absolutely spot on. It's just you can't buy a goal at the moment. And then the very next week, he takes a shot from 25 yards, he goes under the goal, he scores. Yeah, and that's all it takes. Yeah. No. He, he, a week ago, he wouldn't have taken a shot from 25 yards. Mm, yeah. But I said, look, keep working, if you're working on training, we're, we're doing these practices, we're shooting, doing shooting practice after every session, and you just got to take them to your game. He took yeah. a shot. Scored and, and his confidence grew, and he was he was man of the match. And if you provide that that encouragement and support mm. people, then they are likely to be more dedicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, after the game, I, um, after we all went home, and I, I messaged him privately. So look, don't worry, keep your head up. Yeah. We'll go again Tuesday. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, thanks for that. 
and that, that's a really good thing for me. And then for you, Charlie, in terms of people being perhaps more yeah. negative about sessions, I think, how do you feel about it? I, don't I think, think we've me, really had no, we've had that, but I've had it at previous clubs that I've coached at. And I think that the problem is, is you only need one, and it's it's cancerous and it spreads. You know, you need one person kicking off. So influential person, influential. Yeah. yeah. So for me, my relationship with players has to be paramount. Now, whether I take the blame for stuff that wasn't my fault, or you know, that's it's almost like working with kids a little bit. I know it sounds silly, but sometimes you have to admit fault when it's not yours to maintain that relationship because if that relationship breaks down that's it then because you can create a manager he can drop a player he can he can kick a player out of the club I, I don't have that power if they turn up to the session and they're not engaged that can ruin the whole session whereas if they turn up to a football match and not engaged you can create just say right you're on the bench you're not playing you know so he's got a bit more leverage over them so for me I have to maintain that relationship I think the way that I've found to do that is and this is going to sound a bit like I'm lying or cheating to them a bit but I try to make out I've included them in decisions of what we're doing. So if someone's giving off about, right, we're not doing enough of this about getting the ball wide, I'll say, right, you know, I've spoken to a few lads, you know, I appreciate the feedback. What we're going to do is, I don't think, you know, if you disagree, we'll, we'll talk about it, but actually, do you think we need to move on to do this? And nine times out of ten, most footballers are going to say, yeah, okay, yeah, I agree with you. Really, the reality is we've probably had a conversation and thought, actually, what we need to do in training next week is A, B and C. And we just sell it to the players as, I appreciate some of you speaking to me, you know, or in light of that, we're now going to move on to this. And it feels like they're contributing as well, and they're actually taking a bit of ownership over their own progress. And, and it gives them probably more reward at the end, to feel I was involved in Yeah, that. exactly. And do you know what, I actually, I love reading about sports psychology. I read Clive Woodward, you know, the England, yeah, yeah. obviously. He, he was, when he took over at the RFU, it was a bit more of an amateur organisation still. And, and part of the thing he did was, essentially, he knew how to fix a problem. But him going off on his own like some knight in shining armour, that doesn't encourage people to come no. with you. So you've got to include people in those decisions. Whether they actually make a difference, irrelevant. But if they feel like they contribute. So I think that's what I've tr tried to do. And so far, touch wood, we haven't really had much in the sense of dissension. There was a bit in the beginning of pre-season where a few people didn't like... Because you were very different, probably. Probably, yeah, because, yeah. It, was the, yeah, because it wasn't... It's tr the training sessions last season was non-anonymous. It was, it was nothing. Um... It was literally like the six aside or something because mm. we didn't have the qualities there. But obviously, <coughs> sorry, Charlie's come in and first session, but we're doing this, 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 and people are like, what? Yeah, oh, I mean, it's a not, natural human reaction. It's not just a sunshine. I mean, I've, I've had some awful sessions recently, and I think the good, good thing is because I've built up, and it's not blowing sunshine, but built up that rapport with those lads, they, they've got by with, yeah, that was a shit session, Charlie, but it doesn't matter. Whereas if there wasn't that relationship between us, and I had it at the last club I was involved at, if I did a shit session, that was it, I'd lost them. You know, they weren't bothered. Yeah. And that was because their attitude to football wasn't quite as good anyway. But the point but being, that, that may, for me, that relationship has to be paramount, regardless. Yeah, obviously, obviously, it helps with a decent session when you've got enough players. And, and every session so far has been yeah. between 16 to 18. Which is great. And if those numbers don't drop, mm. it shows you doing something right, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, I, I always message the, group, uh, the lads on the Monday morning. I say, look, reminder, training, meet here, momentum's good, numbers are good, mm. keep it going. And then, and then obviously if you're not there fine but it probably it literally go um, it goes yeah cool and then you get 18 lads turned up and you're like I'm Which happy that I'm happy that makes it, my head makes my uh, decision harder it probably leads on to my my next question which are probably the only two obvious ones that will come mm -hmm. up in here which you probably expect at the start mm -hmm. and I think you've probably both touched on the first element of it cool. which is what do each of you believe in your role is your biggest strength and weakness so for me, based on what you've said, Craig, I would automatically assume it's that man management building confidence in people, but I could obviously be wrong there. I feel like I can talk, I, I want to talk to every, I can, I, I, I'm not really speaking to the older ones as much, to be honest, because I know what I can get from them, I know them, it's the younger ones, mm. and I'm, obviously I want to help the young ones to a, a to a certain, well, obviously to a certain level, to get them higher up. Um, biggest weakness? I think it's hard, it's quite hard to tell them you're not uh, like you're not in the squad. So still not having the car. I would say it's true on yours though. Personally, I'm not it's, saying this because you're. It's one hard of the mates, to like. But, no, but hear me out because I think if you just drop some about telling them, I think you've always spoke to someone when they've been dropped, and whether they like it or not, players always want you to be up front with them. That's a great shoot. I had a goalkeeper. I'd, um, I had a goalkeeper situation. Obviously, like I said earlier, and uh, he deserved to play the next week. I said I messaged my other goalkeeper. I said that I'm playing him this week. Mm. He. Play well last week. I'm giving him another go. He goes, okay, mate, no worries. Yeah. So I think actually, I know you're saying about a negative of that. I, I, I can understand why you think that. And so far, the going's quite good for us. When it maybe hits the fan, that's when you probably yeah, test yourself we, a bit more. I think. But yeah, I, think, I, think, I, think when, I think that's actually, I think when we lost our, our first league game, I think that was. I suppose what I'm saying is, I don't think the expectation now from a manager of grassroots football even 
because I think it has filtered down from the top level, is they don't want the old teacup throwing, you know, nutcase of a manager yeah. who's just going to ball you out and, you know, you're dropped, you'll never play for this club again, all that sort of stuff. And I think those days are gone. I think you're probably um, on the, you know, a new wave of, of managers. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather take a calmer approach. Mm. Um, if I'm really annoyed with some with a player that's done something wrong, I will yeah. speak to him privately. So I guess for you, it's not so much that it's a weakness in terms of your characteristics. It's that you don't feel comfortable or strong yeah. when doing it. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's probably natural. It's only been involved for three, four months. Of the yeah, match. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then for Charlie, biggest uh, strength, biggest weakness. No, well, that's an easy question. No, 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 no. I don't want to blow. I think what I would say is a strength is the detail of this of from a coaching perspective. I think quite often sometimes it's there's an expectation you do this broad thing, right? Right, we're gonna get we're gonna do a session on wide play. Well wide play in itself is a fucking huge subject to try and mm. tackle. So actually it's about so I would look at it and think, right, we're gonna do wide play. Right, what we're gonna do at the minute is we're giving the ball away in too many two V one possessions in our favour. So what we're gonna do is do a bit of work on that. So I think actually what I would like to think is we've got so many training sessions left between now and the end of the season. You can really chisel down. So I'd like to think the detail that I go into is definitely... It's just passion showing, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. I think you're so. probably more passionate about actually coach. There's not many people in non-league football who don't want to be a manager, but say, no. I want to coach. Yeah. There's probably not many people that passion no, to actually I just coach a team. Yeah. I think the negative thing for me is I, I like to have too much control. And, even that, and that's part of the reason. Maybe being a coach tempers that a bit. But there's times when I probably still try and get involved a bit too much with why don't you... I don't give them enough time to problem solve, definitely. And I think that that's... The younger lads especially need to learn that actually three times I've tried to knock over that ball back head and it's not worked. Right, I'm going to do something different. And I think I'm too quick to jump in in those situations. So I think it's... Not probably not... No, not that. It's patience. I think I lack a bit of patience as a coach. I try and solve a problem a bit too quickly. And but actually, that's, that's probably as a young... But your playing day still being... Yeah. There, so. But I would have worked that out, you know. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. So, yeah, probably that, I would say. I appreciate both of your honesty on that, generally. No. I think that would probably help quite a few people if they listen to it. Yeah. Um, and I want to lead on from your weaknesses, and it would probably be a very similar answer, but I'm interested to see the way you would go about it. Is reflecting on your current ability as a coach, and for Craig, in your instance, as a relatively new manager, mm -hmm. what do you feel is going to make you better in your role by the end of the year, and even potentially moving on from there? I think it's dealing with the hard times. I think, I think what... Uh, we're on a good run at the moment. I was going to um, say, you haven't had a particularly hard time no, relative to what, 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 this season. Seven out of the first eight, is it? Or yeah, six out of the first eight. Six out of six, seven wins? Seven yeah, out, seven out of the first seven eight. Seven out of eight. Let's um, say not many defeats, huh? Not yeah. many defeats, let's, let's say that. But I think it's, I think when we lose that moment and we lose that game, um, I think it's how we bounce back from it. I think mm. how we, as a team, would deal with it. Yeah. Um, and we and I said I think we've got to stay strong because you, you players once I, I know our lot our players will, will say the old comment they'll wind us what mm. wind me up to a, a, a degree they'll wind someone else up yeah um, but we just got to, I think we just got to, we take the loss on the on the chin even if we deserve to lose or we didn't deserve to lose we take it on the chin and we'll just go again on on the midweek and training mm. on Tuesday and and it's just keep um, keep that belief going with the lads I think. Yeah, and for Charlie, I guess as a coach, what do you what do you believe will improve you? Because I guess this is probably the first yeah. sustained period you've had as a as a, almost a first yeah. team coach. Right? No, no, definitely. I think in terms of that, it's dealing with because there's going to be a lot of chopping and changing coming soon, Christmas time. And that, as you mentioned, being a reserve team, exactly. with players coming up, players going down, down whatever else. and, yeah. that, and people, people work as well. So it's yeah. being able to trust players. I think to carry out that that you know you come down from the first team and you play this. Well, when you're here, you've got to do it that way and is trying to not get frustrated. So I think, for me, I probably need to go out of the bubble that we're in at the minute. We're not helping out from a first-team session, but maybe going to watch them train to see what's going on there. So then if someone does drop down... So actually, I think what I'm sort of trying to say, I need to broaden my understanding now. We're obviously on a good run, and what we're doing is working. So even within the club, going to watch first-team games... Yeah, and not resting on your laurels a bit, really. So I think I, I, as a personality, can become very complacent if something's going well. And that's not... you know, I was, I've been similar in situations at work where... You know, been doing quite well, and then you start, and that's when you start to slip in bad habits and stuff. So, but we're all guilty of that. Yeah, but what it's, I mean it's, is, it's, is that so to keep me on my toes, I think I need to be put out of my comfort zone. So it might be worth me saying, actually, you know what, the 18s of you know, if we say we haven't got a game one week, right? The 18s have got a session. Right, I'll go and help out and coach them, even though I don't know any of the lads. So, you know, to to keep me 
A, in line with the pathway of the club, but B, to keep me on my toes and be a bit and more like... as you say earlier, to see if it's just because the lads like you now, or if it's, am I actually coaching well yeah, at the moment? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. So in that sense, yeah, broadening myself and keep myself um, busy and, con- and not complacent, basically. I like that. Oh, thank you very much for... Yeah. Um, I've got three more questions remaining for Go this for session. Um, so the first one is is the last the last on the negative side, yeah, which right. is... Just generally, and I, I don't need too much specifics on this, we'll probably go into them in other areas in detail, is what have you enjoyed least about Craig managing and Charlie coaching a team? So me, me about him? Not necessarily about him. What have you right. enjoyed least about coaching a team this year? Um, and for you, Craig what, managing? What, what he's done? No, no. It doesn't have to be specific. Getting me, be something he's me, done. No, me getting knackered after his sessions. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um... Uh, genuinely, yeah. j- just on that very quickly, d- branching off. Yeah. Do, do you do you enjoy it, or do you find it harder having to take part in sessions? Because as you mentioned, due to what numbers, do you find that harder? I think the st- pre-season I found it harder because I was so unf- I was unfit. I wasn't expecting to do, uh, take part. I didn't bring my boots, nothing. I just was playing in trainers. Yeah. Um, but the more sessions, obviously, that's gone on, the more I want to get involved now. Um, Which is probably a compliment to his coach. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. Without, yeah, no it is because um, obviously the way we're doing, and then obviously there's no player, and then I turn up and I play, and I thought, yeah, I still got it, and I'm still a baller. And, I'm, and plus, I'm teaching, I am might be doing it wrong, but I'm still doing it. I'm, they're learning that I can make a mistake as well. Which is a really nice thing for a player, I think. Mm. And Charlie, for you coaching. What have you found? What have you found the hardest or the bit that you've liked the least? I think, <laughs> unless you're involved in grassroots football, might you know, and that's not just coaching but playing. Even it's it's to be able to relate to. It's the, the constant chopping and changing of right. This is where you're training. You got this space. Then suddenly that changes, and then you've got 16 lads. Then you might, and it's not always a negative. You you, you plan for 16, and then 20 turn up, and you're like, oh shit. So being adaptable, it's so that's the bit I've liked the least. Is that I would like I would like to think, and I don't know because I can't say because I haven't been up. As a, a coach, further up the pyramid, I'd like to think the further up the pyramid you go, the more um, not reliable. What's the one I'm looking for? Consistent. Consistent. Thank you very much. The c- consistent. The numbers are the space you're training in, the areas that you can go into as a coach and as a player. Whereas at the minute, it's like you know, it's great that we've got some under 18s coming, but they're not playing on Saturday, so it's lovely they're involved and it makes up the numbers. But actually, it's a bit of a pain sometimes because like fucking hell, I planned for 16, now I've got 20. That's completely flipped the session. It's hard so, um, that, 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 as, but you're, as a grassroots coach, you're going to get that. You know, there's times when pitches get double booked. There's times when you have lads who are on a stag do, and then you've got eight players for training. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So that's the bit I found the bit, and it's the bit I hate the least. Is I don't the, really um, know. My sessions changed, so I planned a session yesterday for ch- this Tuesday. And it's probably worse because you say you plan in such detail. Yeah. So then it comes to Tuesday at six thirty, and it's like right, actually, I mean, it's only an example, but we haven't got the goalkeepers now. So you think I've done a whole session on defending set pieces as an example and he can't do it and I've got yeah I can't do it so suddenly he's got to flip it so I think that's the bit I hate the least is the constant chopping and changing he had, he had a plan B for that session though I did yeah but that's the thing yeah, is, is that, that, but it's that principle that it takes a bit of extra time takes a bit of extra yeah, effort yeah. And I, I'm really, when I'm really interested that the first thing you both went to was related to training rather than games and that's no, something because, that's going to be really no, because, key next uh, I was gonna, uh, uh, obviously I've taken training cause, just for my own body experience but like for a manager's point of view is it's the organisation of right obviously I've got a secretary that does right this is a game this is the referee you've got so I get no, I get emails saying oh yeah this is going to be your referee this week this is going to be the fixture this week yeah. but then it's just the organisation right I've got right I need a message to 16 lads here and then some will reply straight away and some don't reply back mm. to the next day or someone leaves their phone in their work office and then you like then you start to panic oh my god's sake and then, think- you, and then you then next thing you're worrying about is a game is the game going to be on because I can't get a chance because I'm working in them yeah. on that morning. So I'm like, and I need the, to. The rely. tough bit, sorry to interrupt, the tough bit you've got is being a reserve team. We were meant to have, as an example, a first team player drop down to play for us because he wasn't getting minutes in the first team on Saturday. Just didn't show up. Didn't text or anything. And you know, you don't get, have that, that regular contact. Yeah, so we've then dropped the player yeah. out of the squad of 16 because obviously you need to allow for this lad to come in. So then we're now there's some lad who didn't get, even get a kit on Saturday because we bought this first team player. He didn't even bother showing up. and I don't imagine you'd get that higher up the pyramid, but at grassroots level, that's the sort of stuff that you're probably dealing with. Yeah, and then the, like I've I've let down a player where he could have got some minutes, maybe. and that could affect you a week later down the line. Exactly, yeah. And I guess that's the bit that people probably don't realise. It sort of steps five, six, seven, moving down is how similar to probably even Sunday league the organisation yeah. and the administration mm. is. Oh, the organisation. They just it's assume so it's an FA much. competition. It must be. Yeah, it's like the same thing like organising a friendly. Organ- I've never been so stressed organising friendlies. <laughs> 
I was so relieved when it was like, my final pre-season game. I was like, yes, yeah. the season starts now. It's everything's organised. Something it's scheduled for us. Yeah. Um, and I guess on the flip side of that, the penultimate question, and it's a, it's a more enjoyable one to answer, is what for you this season, for each of you, has been the most rewarding part of your roles? Um, for me, this we had a game recently. It, it's seeing um, <clears throat> a combination of things. Not just that you might score from a set piece. or It's seeing a combination of both attacking and defensive um, philosophies coming together. So, and that, that so far, that happened on Saturday. We had a combination of we played a team and we'd, we'd worked on sort of pressing and stuff like that and we knew they were good football inside and they played a back three so what we did was we then put an extra man up front and we were like right we're going to press them high up the pitch hard 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 but obviously there's a risk to that but then it was right when we get the ball so they don't get time to settle into their shape we're going to move the ball quickly now not long ball but we're going to be a bit more direct a bit more positive with it so rather than going across the pitch we're going to try and go up the pitch as quick as we can so the challenge I set to them was can you get to the centre forward or the wide men in free passes from the goalkeeper or whatever you know so I think that seeing those two parts come together that for me was the most rewarding part because you know there's some games where you defend well but then you fucking miss half four chances or you attack really well but you end up losing 5-4 do you know what I mean so I think seeing the culmination of th- two, three, four parts of a jigsaw come together as a coach that's the best bit and to win at the same time and for you Craig as a manager um, as a manager I think uh, the recent game uh, we had Tactically, we got a spot on. I was really happy that, and I think more. It's it's not, and that's down to you. So I you know I talk, I was just speaking about that, bit, but choosing to play two up front was as a manager. That's his choice. You know I mean, that's nothing to do with me. That's him to go right. We're going to play him, him, and him in those positions. So I think you've got to take a lot of credit for that. Um, I think it's it's that. I think it's three things. It was, it was one that our uh, uh, our striker scored that hadn't scored for a while, because he kept believing, which is I think that's. I'm not. I'm not going to take full credit for it, but no, it's no, that no, chat no. Just keep But knowing right. that you've been involved or been a part, yeah, of that. yeah. And I think um, just from a, being an, an old defender, it's just a clean sheet. Yeah. We haven't had a clean sheet for ages. You love no. a clean sheet. I love a clean sheet. You know. well, clean I, sheet. I, I play if, Sunday if league with you plenty to know you love hey, a clean sheet. <laughs> look, it's it's pretty simple. If you've got a clean sheet, you've got a point at least. Yeah, that's that's, that's, fact. that's a good logic. That's Sam Allardyce philosophy. Yeah, but I was really pleased because the team that we played, obviously, they're very good on the ball. But I don't know they weren't on Saturday, but I think because we were tactically spot on. Mm. But I was, I was more pleased that we had a clean sheet, mm. and well, hopefully that can that can continue. Fair enough. And a final question for me, and this one's going to be more of an opinion, right? And, and, and I'm asking you, obviously, you please don't predict, make me predict no, this no. season. <laughs> you won't know the answer to this, and I may or may not be able to obtain it later on in the year. Um, if we were asked, or if we asked one of your players to describe you as a manager Craig and as a coach oh, Charlie yes. what do you think they would say about you based on the season so far he's a wanker <laughs> <laughs> seriously take it oh <laughs> yeah no it was <laughs> no I don't know because it's a hard one I, what I, do you I, think they think yeah I would say for me I, I would like to what, what three, three words or whatever you want mate whatever Legend. you want no I would like to think they would see me as fair I think I'm quite fair with them whether it's you know the positive or negative aspect of it so I think they would see me as fair and Probably, probably for the level we're playing at, and I know I mentioned earlier, but quite, quite detailed. I would also say that they'd probably see me as a little bit. Um, when I say fair, what I mean was, is I, you know, I can get a bit shouty sometimes uh, in training sessions when I don't think the standards high. And actually, we spoke about that earlier. So yeah, probably loud, fair, and detailed. Fair enough. Um, I won't have three words. <laughs> you don't have to have three words. No, um, I'm hoping that they they can talk to me. Uh, rather than just talk to other players and then slag and slag off, rather than we have a chat and we can mm. have an opinion and we can go from there. Like I'll, I'll have more than happy to chat in the bar afterwards. Um, I feel like yeah, you still got it <laughs> in training. Yeah. Um, no. Um, yeah. No. I just I just hope that obviously just keep that relationship going and end of the day that's that's what you want the manager and players obviously but have that relationship with the player but. He still make strong enough to make that decision and not cave in to player power. I guess for for me, even just from managing in a workplace, the most important thing I would say is approachable. So I'm really glad that's the one yeah. thing you said. Mm. But uh, I guess as as the last part of this question, I wasn't planning to do it, but why not? Is could you do it for each other? Mm-hmm. Based on what you've seen this season, yeah, no, what so would you think? What would you think the players would say about each other? So what do you think? So for him, I would about? definitely say that they that they that he is. Um, selfless 
definitely is. He gives everything for them and will take you know whatever flack for them and stuff like that. Um, approachable, which is I think like you mentioned earlier, and and actually um, astute is that the right word? But you know, is in quite, takes his time to think about stuff. Doesn't just go, fly off the handle. You know, whether it be not just having a go at someone, but actually you know ta- thinking about a decision. So are we going to bring him on? Are we not going to bring him on? Doesn't just go impulse right, bang bang bang. Let's go and do that. Which so, is really important as a manager, um, not to react with emotion. Yeah, and I can't think of the word for it, but yeah, that sort of patience, I suppose, yeah. And for you, Craig, speaking about Charlie, um, and what do you think the players would think of him? No, to be honest, they, I've, I've had players uh, feedback to me about Which uh, is Charlie. Which is about. Um, no, they said they, they're enjoying, they're loving training, they're absolutely loving it. Uh, they love the, they do like the detail, they do like they, they can actually work on things, and they, they can obviously see the improvement from last season, so... Um, all I can say is just keep going. That's all I can say. And, and you must like that uh, and take some of the credit for that, having highlighted him as the man you want to coach, <laughs> to then see players' feedback being positive genuinely must be a nice thing for you. Yeah, as, as, as I said, like me and uh, Rich had this chat back in March, i say. Um, we was watching we'll, we'll, uh, one of the Sunday games and we literally had a chat about it. And um, I know we spoke privately about it on this podcast, actually. But uh, yeah, and it, we knew... It was a right decision. It, we couldn't. There was no other player that, oh, no other person, sorry, that we think we could, that we can do the role as details as what Charlie's been doing. So, um, to see that, I think it for the players it did take a while after the first couple of preseason trainings, maybe because they're still knackered and blowing, yeah. but it is working. Um, yeah. I think he's selling himself short a bit there, though. I think it's having creating that environment to do that because I coached another adult team last year and. You know, I, I like to think I've made a little bit of progress since then, but I'm not a massively different coach, and yet that went completely pear shaped. So, I think, I think it's having that environment, and I think you're you're very good at creating that environment for people to make progress in the flow. I think, so it's, I think, I think that's what makes it maybe a good the, a good the players. So far. I think the difference between the two sides. Also, I, I haven't seen the, old, the your previous side that the, the boys want to play football. They want to learn. Yeah, but where, that comes. I where, think where, that comes from their I leadership. Think, I think where the the players in the previous team just pl- just turned up and yeah. played. Um, but our players, even the young ones, they want to learn. They want to play. Uh, even the old, even the old lads. Like, yeah. If I oh, I can do this. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll adjust that comes, myself. That must come down to your to your leadership, though, Craig. But you know, that's the environment they want to play in. But yeah. So I guess I just I just like to use the experience. I think obviously because I played for the first team for so long, I played a, a, a couple of steps higher. It's just giving that experience and mm. even like I'm not like like we criticise the right back just from not from how he played because he played well. But it's the extra bit, of the like, detail. yeah, because you can't do everything on your own. You need yeah. the you need your midfield, the wide with your player in front of you just to just to say come back and help me five yards because if you're going to trot long, you have to send yourself short. Mm. And, and is that and one rich have a different way of saying it. I have a different way of yeah. saying it. But um, at the end of the day, we both come. We both have the same answer. Mm. I, I guess one of the things I really appreciate from this is how honest you've both been, both weaknesses and strengths, mm. and about each other. I guess yeah, I, I guess, get the job. <laughs> I guess one of the things that that's come out of it for me is obviously in terms of you two, in terms of getting a result or or the little tactical details of the way you want to play football are probably very different. Mm. But in terms of your core values are actually very similar, and that means that that you're able to work together despite little differences. I think you, and I think like you, you've, got, you've got the same values to start with. Otherwise, what's the point? And you've mm. highlighted that, which you should take credit for. So that's yeah. that's an important thing. But I, I want to appreciate your honesty. I, I like the fact that you've all touched on, on things such as training and tactics in particular, which are two of the things I want to discuss with you in a bit more detail. Right. But in terms of this first one for a, a generic start off, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. I really enjoyed no, it, and I'll thank you for your time. You. No, so thank, thank you. you both for you for being honest, and hopefully people will like it enough that we'll be able to do the rest of the series. Uh, if you want to see more, then please follow us on all of our platforms. Uh, let us know what you thought of the discussion. And let us know what aspects you'd like Craig and Charlie to talk. Obviously, you can follow us on Twitter at HonestFootball3. And we'll see you next time.